boys and girls. We got uh, another video for you fine folks on the internet today. Uh, another installment in the Matthew Buckley Talks Music series. Looking once again at uh, another fun early 1960s hot rod album. Uh, this time it is The Hondells, Go Little Honda. Uh, released in October of 1964 on Mercury Records in the United States and Canada, and uh, actually not given a reissue until 2015 when it was uh, reissued on a Japanese paper sleeve CD uh, by Old Days Records with two bonus tracks featuring uh, their songs My Buddy Seat and You're Gonna Ride With Me. Uh, so for anyone who's uh, not familiar, uh, the Hondells were a product of the music industry, much like uh, the Monkees in the early days of their TV show. You know, almost not a real band. Uh, the band's genesis lies in the Beach Boys song, Little Honda, uh, the namesake of this album. Um, the song was written by Brian Wilson and Mike Love. After hearing the song in mid-1964, uh, Brian's frequent collaborator, Gary Usher, uh, drafted Chuck Gerard, former vocalist of pop and rhythm and blues group The Castells, and a handful of L.A. session musicians, including Glenn Campbell, Al DeLore, Tommy Tedesco, and Richie Podolor. Uh, in addition um, to a cover of Little Honda, uh, the group recorded a full album of songs written by Gary Usher, uh, along with Southern California DJ Roger Christian, all themed around motorcycles. Again, <laughs> we have a concept album, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, leading up to the album's release, a small touring unit was put together, including drummer Wayne Edwards and bass player Richie Burns, who was credited as the band's founder in a mostly fictional backstory conceived by Gary Usher for the liner notes on the back cover. Um, apparently, uh, in my research, I found that the group's name had actually not even been decided upon until after the final masters were delivered, which is hilarious to me. That tells you just how much they were flying by the seat of their pants, um, as a manner of speaking. But uh, Side A on the album opens with uh, the namesake Little Honda, uh, originally written, as I said, by Brian Wilson and Mike Love of the Beach Boys. Um, and that was song was initially released, released on the Beach Boys' sixth full-length studio album All Summer Long in July of 1964. The following month, Mercury Records uh, issued this cover by the Hondells as the B-side to their first 45 RPM single, peaking at number 9 on the U.S. Billboard charts. Um, Capitol Records would subsequently uh, issue the Beach Boys version as a promotional single, but it would only reach number 65 on the charts, even in spite of a promotional TV spot on the Andy Williams show in 1965. The Hondells would also promote Little Honda, um, their single, with uh, appearances on American Bandstand and Shindig, uh, both of those television programs. In my opinion, lead vocalist Chuck Gerard nails the uh, high-pitched, somewhat nasally style of del delivery pioneered by Mike Love. And the harmony vocals are tight as well. No matter what version, you know, I've always loved the chorus, you know, first gear, it's all right, second gear, I'll lean right, third gear, hang on tight, faster, it's all right, it, it always puts a smile on my face, just one of those silly things. This is a good cover. The next track, Mean Streak, was written by Gary Usher and Roger Christian and tells the story of a leather jacket wearing motorcycle riding troublemaker uh, his prowess with the ladies leads to a confrontation with some jealous guys who tell him to leave town and so he does but not without taking the singer's girlfriend tragic the song was also concurrently recorded by another gary usher produced group the kickstands released by Capitol Records in May 1964 on the Black Boots and Bikes LP. And their version includes kind of a spoken uh, part uh, between a couple of the verses, 
uh, before uh, the guy runs out uh, runs out of town with the singer's girlfriend. There's a part, a spoken part, where the the singer tries to encourage the the other guys in the town to give the guy a chance and you know not not just assume his mean streak means he's a bad guy. So it, it makes it all the worse when his you know his girl runs off with the guy. Like oh no, I tried to give him a chance. Um, but uh, I really dig the groove of the song. It, the organ solo kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere in this version uh, that the Handels do, but it's neat. I really like the plunky, plucking sound effect that starts before the fade out. The next track, A Guy Without Wheels, was, again, written by Gary Usher and Roger Christian. The song laments the struggle of a young man who knows how important it is to have a car to be cool and get the attention of girls. He even sings about the irony of hardly seeing his girl because he's busy working overtime. And I love the lyric, I went out and bought a car, now I can't afford a meal. But the but it's the same old story when you don't have wheels. It's uh, you know, it's fun it, it's 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 kind of, you know, funny stuff in a, in a, in a way. Um, the track comes uh, right out the gate with a lot of energy, strong harmonies, great lead delivery, uh, probably one of the album highlights in my opinion. Uh, that said, this track was also recorded by another Gary Usher produced group, The Superstocks, issued by Capitol Records in 1964 on the School is a Drag album, credited to The Superstocks featuring Gary Usher. And the next track, The Wild One, is another Usher and Christian collaboration and tells the story of a young man who loses his life in a motorcycle accident with a semi-truck after, you know, building a reputation of being a, a capable but somewhat reckless motorcycle rider. Um, in spite of uh, this, you know, somewhat darker theme, I think the song is one of the strongest on the album. The, the harmonies are very strong. It doesn't feel as derivative as some of the other material on the record. It definitely stands out if you ask me. Um, however, the song was also featured um, on the School is a Drag album by the Superstocks. Um, so that, that is another song that was featured on that album as well. Um, and the next track, Hall and Honda, is credited to guitarist and producer uh, Richie Podolor, uh, who was, you know, drafted as one of the session musicians for the album, and is a very groovy, guitar-based instrumental, very upbeat, you know, fast-moving. It definitely invokes imagery of cruising down long stretches of road. It's a very solid instrumental. You could trick someone, probably, into thinking that this is The Ventures. Um, and the following track, Hot Rod High, was uh, written by Gary Usher and Roger Christian, once again. Um, and uh, also, once again, this comes bursting out of the speakers with a whole lot of energy. Just really solid backing vocals. And very it's a very upbeat melody. You know, this, is, this song is, has heaping helpings of classic macho braggadocio for, for young jocks in the 60s. You know, nothing but winners, all you losers scram. Got no time for tests or a school book exam. Early in the morning we go screaming by, loaded up with chicks in front of Hot Rod High. We're gonna, we're gonna tear up the parking lot, uh, cause a quick half hour is all we got. Kids learn and tires burn down at Hot Rod High. It's, uh, it's cheesy, campy uh, in its own way. Uh, schlock even, but it's delightful and... You know, it, it very successfully captures a culture and spirit and moment in time. And this song was uh, actually concurrently recorded by two other Gary Usher produced groups. The Knights, released as the title track of their album of the same name, uh, Hot Rod High, in July 1964 and subsequently issued as a 45 RPM single under their name in October. Uh, and there was also a version recorded by the Superstocks released uh, on the School as a Drag album, credited to the Superstocks featuring Gary Usher. So that song uh, had three different issues floating around uh, in late 1964. 
Uh, definitely, uh, you know, permeated uh, Gary Usher's work there. And with that, we end Side A. Uh, side B opens with Death Valley Run, written by Gary Usher and Roger Christian. Uh, a story of an annual 600-mile motorcycle race. Um, the song has serviceable, if not great, harmonies. There are better harmonies elsewhere on the album. And it also has quite a lively, uh, but it, it not exactly impressive, guitar solo. Um, the track was also recorded uh, by the Kickstands and issued as the opening track on their Black Boots and Bikes LP. Um, the next track, Two Wheel Showstopper, was another product of the Gary Usher, Roger Christian songwriting team, and has our narrator proudly singing about his illustrious motorcycle, and you know, all the, the medals and trophies he's won with it, and you know all the the great parts the motorcycle has, but how all the motorcycle's missing is a groovy little chick on his buddy seat. <laughs> uh, the song includes a silly spoken word outro, and you know, I, I like that sort of thing. Um, and this song was also recorded by the Kickstands for their Black Boots and Bikes LP, just like the previous track before it. Um, and the following track, titled black boots and bikes is another instrumental uh once again credited to richie podolor um it's a groovy guitar workout a very groovy guitar workout uh somewhat less high energy than the instrumental on side a um that he wrote but still chugs along with a lot of vigor uh parts of the main theme honestly kind of make me think of of spy movies you know like james bond or something there's a part where it breaks down and you know you hear the guitar go dee 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 it's, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of spy. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great instrumental. And in spite of the title, uh, this was not issued on the album of the same title by the Kickstands, nor issued under that group's name at all. So it's, you know, just kind of a bit of conceptual continuity there, I guess. Uh, which I think is cool. I'm always all for that. Uh, and the next track, Riding Trails, uh, was written by Gary Usher and Roger Christian once again, and is an ode to riding off-road dirt bike trails. Uh, the uh, you can have your rods and rails, I'll be riding trails lyric uh, kind of reminds me of the Jan and Dean song "Tell 'Em I'm Surfing," where the uh, where the duo sings about skipping extracurricular activities and even dates for surfing. You know, just tell 'em I'm surfing. Um, so I, that, this song kind of has that same spirit. Um, and this was another track also recorded and issued by the Kickstands on the Black Boots uh, and Bikes LP. So that's uh, most of Side B, really. Um, and the next track, Honda Beach Party, was written solely by Gary Usher and is another guitar-centered instrumental. Uh, the first part of the uh, song uh, features some lively and pretty jangly guitar, um, but uh, eventually it sort of kicks it into high gear, and we actually get some impressive guitar leads. Uh, really, the first uh, bit of you know of a very solid, solid, super, very impressive guitar leads in my opinion, or at least the first guitar leads that really move me. I should say I shouldn't you know discredit any of the work before. Um, but I like the guitar in this track. Um, it's a solid instrumental. In the next track, Rip's Bike is yet another instrumental. Um, credited to musician and songwriter uh, Mike Kerb. Uh, and this uh, one, this song features harmonica and also organ. It has a, you know, delightfully homespun feeling. It's almost kind of ramshackle in a way. And uh, with that, we end side B. Um, so two instrumentals play us away, which I think is kind of interesting. I'm surprised they didn't, you know, spread them out a bit more throughout the album. But it is what it is. Um, all things considered, it's a very fun listen. Um, if you include Little Honda, then eight of the album's 12 tracks were recorded and released by another group. 
Um, literally all of the album's vocal tracks. Three by the Superstocks, one of those also done by the Knights, and four by the Kickstands. All of these tracks were issued within weeks of each other. I uh, haven't been able to establish a firm date for the Superstocks featuring Gary Usher's release of uh, School is a Drag, but uh, I know that uh, the Knights, uh, you know, issued their single in July, or their album in July, and their single in October, and this album came out in October. Uh, and the single was shortly before, so, you know, all of these had to be within, you know, a few, a few short weeks, uh, months of each other, if not just uh, a number of weeks. It's, it's uh, surprising <clears throat> that there would be, you know, so many permutations, slight variations of these songs uh, in the market and on, you know, um, only a couple labels, mostly Capital and also Mercury here. But, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. And Gary Usher was absurdly uh, productive during this time, cranking out material for various surf and hot rod projects, both for bands and for films. Whether it be uh, the Hondells, or, uh, you know, he wrote a lot of music for some of the beach party films that were quite popular in the mid-60s. Um, and he experimented with different arrangements and ideas for songs as he produced them for different projects, letting them bleed into each other and reappear in other projects. You know, a song would you know, not be finalized just because one group released it in a certain arrangement. He would find another arrangement for a song and, you know, f produce it for another group and it would find new life. It, it, it's, uh, not, in some ways, not too far away from the kind of ethos that you'd see with artists like Frank Zappa, where they would revisit their works, you know, years later. Although, in this case, it's only weeks later. Um... But, you know, still, revisiting your works in different contexts for, uh, you know, a different presentation, I think it makes for very interesting work. Um, in this slice, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very interesting the way he did that, and it creates these songs that are all vaguely interrelated and thematically tied together to sort of create its own extended universe of surf and hot rod California music. This slice of that universe may not necessarily be a masterpiece per se, but it's certainly well made and makes for a very fun listen in my opinion. Uh, so here's a closer look at the cover. You know, it's got some very cool lettering there, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, a shot of uh, these fellas that were being sold to as the players. Um, you know, a nice, nice, nice track layout. Very nice layout. In the back, you know, has another picture of these guys. Again, you have the same very cool uh, layout lettering. Um, and it has uh, some text from Gary Usher here with some absurd stories about how he'll never forget his first motorcycle and then, you know, our semi-fictional story about Richie Burns starting the band. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's all good stuff. We have a, a cool picture of ladies on a bike. And then the tracks and who wrote what. And this was before uh, the lawsuit, so Mike Love isn't credited on Little Honda, but he co-wrote it. He, he's getting credit now. And then inside here, we just have this on the old early 60s Mercury label. Nothing too crazy to write home about. But yeah, all things considered, uh, again, this certainly isn't uh, a mind blower of an album. It's, you know, something of a, a cash grab in a lot of ways. Uh, just uh, produced, um, you know, in the, the wake of a, a new craze that... Uh, you know, these uh, executives at Mercury Records felt like they could make a dollar on, so they let uh, Gary Usher run wild and, you know, record some, some songs about uh, motorcycles. Uh, but, uh, again, I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's fascinating. I, I love all these documents of certain pockets of uh, culture, you know. It's almost like... It's almost, uh, I don't want to, you know, get too heady, but it's almost like a certain anthropological study in a way, you know, just 
uh, a piece of American culture that uh, existed for you know quite uh, quite a while in a lot of people's lives, and uh, it's nice to have music to go along with it. Um, so I really enjoy this, and I would give this a solid seven out of ten. Um, you know, it's again, it's certainly not revolutionary, but it's very enjoyable. So let me know in the comments below. Are you familiar with the Handels or Gary Usher or Roger Christian? Have you heard the Handels? Go little Honda. Uh, you know, uh, tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback, uh, and I appreciate any and all viewership. Uh, keep tuning in because I'll try to keep them coming at you. This has been Matthew Buckley Talks Music with Go Little Honda by the Handels. Music is the best.